Okay, I'm Maria Leirbach. I'm from Norway, living in Oslo. Uh, quite a trip down here. Wonderful place, actually. Love it. I'm going to talk about an early intervention program, which we developed in Oslo. We started actually developing the program back in 2013, so it's been, it's been on the road for a while now. Um, the program is called New Families. It's a program which extends the Norwegian Child Health Service in Norway because it's important to know that we already have a basic universal low threshold and free maternal and child health care provision in Norway. But this is strengthening the already system, the health care system that we have. But a, bit, a, a small part of the background, what we knew, why there was a need within the service to, to create something new. There's three different levels here. We have something happened within the national level and within the district level and at the service level. We saw that at the national level, the population in Norway within probably just about 50 years changed from being homogeneous to being a heterogeneous society. And we also saw that the society had a substantial variation within the educa educational attainment, health literacy, and financial means. But, luckily, the policy had increased its focus on health prevention and health promotion. And in addition, we had new child health service guidelines. Child health service is the free low threshold service that we have. And we also saw there were great social inequality related to health status. Within the district, Oslo is composed of 15 districts. One of the districts is called Stovner, which is in the northern part. Within the district we saw, it has over 150 different nationalities. And 58% of the immigrants or Norwegian born, are Norwegian born or with two immigrant parents. And also, one out of every third child grew up in poverty. And one out of every third student dropped out of high school. And one out of four over 20 years old only had primary school education. And the child welfare service budget was over seven times as high as the child health care service. At the CHS level in Stovnad, we saw that uh, there are actually 14 consultations. But in addition to all of those 14 consultations, at the district level, they had 25% of the consultations was extra consultations. So there was a need within the public. And it was also an increased need for secondary measures. And uh, the public health nurses reported back that many parents felt insecurity within their role as a parent. And we also saw that within the 14 ordinary consultations, some of them were not conducted because of a lot of load of the extra consultations. So what were we to do? What we did, we had to define the premises. What were we to do within the service that we already had? And it functions. 98% of its eligible pop, uh, population uses the child health service in Norway. But we wanted to develop something. We wanted to develop an early intervention program. But we wanted to base it on the strengths that we already had within the healthcare system. So we wanted to make it universal. And we also wanted to find a program theory which captured the intention of the Norwegian both universal and positive. And we wanted to use the child health service as the arena. We wanted to start prenatal, and we wanted to use home visits. And we wanted this to be the public health nurse that conducted the visits and that conducted the program. So where did we start? We started out by finding out what does the population want? What does the users of the child health service want? So we had a feasibility study. It was a focus group where I had, I think I had mothers from 16 different nationalities within the focus group interviews and asked them, asking them how they felt about the service, what they wanted, how they felt as a parent, and what was the most important need. How could we develop something in addition? And it was kind of interesting because within 16 different nationalities, they all had one thing in common. Their highest wish was to become a good mother. So that's universal. 
So we did our feasibility study. We, wanted, we knew something then about what the users wanted. And we did a scoping review because we didn't have to create something totally new because there's a lot of good research done within early childhood interventions. And we developed a multi-interdisciplinary steering group committee. And we developed a project group. I like to call this the doers. And we also had focus group discussions with public health nurses. And we wanted our program to be in line with the strategic and political guidelines and the white papers. So where did we end up? We ended up by using the theory of Aron Antonovsky, the salutogenic theory, which focuses on factors that support human wealth and well-being. It asks the nice question, not what makes you sick, but what keeps you healthy. And I think just by focusing on what you already have and what's positive within your life, it's developing, it's defining your resources and building upon that. And he has also the sense of coherence, which says that you have to understand why things happen in your life. And if something happens, you have to know what to do, and you have to have the resources to do that as well, and to be motivated to do that. And he also talks about how generalized resistance resources, which are, every, uh, it's, it's, it, it sounds kind of negative with resistance, but this is the resistance that keeps you healthy. Like it can be your religion, it can be your family, it can be your intelligence, it can be your environment, it can be your house, it can be having running water, water closet, everything around you that supports you and keeps you healthy. That was the theory of our program. And we want the method, how the PHNs were to conduct their home visits, we wanted them to use motivational interview. I don't like the word interview, I like the word having a conversation, but that's what it's called. So, which uses open questions, and it uses reflections, and it has to summarize, just to know that did we talk about what I thought we talk, talked about. And we are also using the method of empathic communication, which is a bit like motivational interview, but it also has um, the public health nurse being a co-narrator. And I think that's kind of a great point, because as a public health nurse, I'm not a public health nurse, but I've talked to them, um, you, you have all this knowledge, and you want to give them the best advice, and you want, often you want to give them the advice or the answer immediately. But instead of doing that, you listen to the family, you hear their story, how they feel about it, ask for their reflections, and then, you may be, as a, as a public health nurse, you ask as a co-narrator, do you want to know my opinion? Perhaps she doesn't even want to hear your opinion. And we also use self-efficacy, which is a really important part of uh, salutogenic theory. And I think it was uh, Henry Ford that had this great quote that I love. He says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So just believing that you can is also a motivational factor within your life. But then, how are we supposed to implement this into the practice field? Because as I already mentioned, we were supposed to use the public health nurses. I'm not now talking about the new families' public health nurses. We increased the resources to the district's child health service. And we wanted to use the same public health nurse that did the ordinary consultations within the family. So it's the same nurse that you meet in your ordinary consultations that conducts the home visits. And being public health nurse is enough. It's good enough. We also developed a manual describing both the scientific theory, the method, procedures, and the use of mobile phone, because all the public health nurses get their own mobile phone and give the number to the family, so they can have a direct contact. And we also have a reg registration scheme, and we also have, um, in the, within the manual, we, we describe how they are to document this within the journal. And then we have a training. We have training sessions, public health nurse to a new family's public health nurse. They go together with an, to a home visit prenatally. And I force them, because it doesn't really like to do that, but they write reflection notes, three reflection notes, and then we have a meeting and talk about what, how did it go? How did the prenatal visit go? How was it important? What, what was their wants and desires? And how, how were you able to conduct these visits? And we also collect our basic data. And that's mainly for the um, district administrations to see that, because they have given us the funds, and we need to produce some data telling us that 
telling them that we actually use the program, we do conduct the home visits. But what about the target group? Who do we go to the home visits within the New Families program? The target group is the first child together. Not first time mothers, but first child together. Or the first child in Norway, or families with increased needs. And increased needs are defined by the public health nurse. We do not have uh, five bullet points that you have to have one of these increased needs. It's up to the public health nurse to decide. And home and the length. We, we start with, or we offer the families home visits from 28th week prenatal, and they follow up the family until the child is two years of age. And they can recruit the families whenever within this period. And they are recruited at the public health service by a midwife, a public health nurse, or the secretary. And, and we have seen that because this is like fire, so it's, people are hearing about it, and you get emails, and you are the general practitioner, practitioners who recruits them as well. So it spreads out. And where are we t today? Uh, 2016, as I said, there are 15 districts in Oslo. 2016, we were in three districts. 2017, seven districts. The year after, 11 districts. And within the fall of this year, we have the program implemented with, within all of Oslo. But I, I heard, uh, I think it was David talking about earlier today, of how every initiative had to be politically anchored. So I have a the last slide about this, because we had to anchor this politically. And that it was anchored at three levels as well. We are anchoring it at the district level. All of the districts are to apply to participate within the program. It's voluntarily. And then there are given some funds to recruit more public health nurses. And the finances, the funds are based upon how many first-time mothers are there within the districts, or how much do the district use the child welfare service. And we also anchored the program within the city government of education. They own the program, and they are the leader of the program committee, and they are actively involved in all of the processes that are regarding the program evaluation and the changes. And then the highest level that we have in Oslo, the city council. The finance were decided through the budget and economically planned for Oslo City. And just last week, we had, a, we had the proposition to the City Council, and it passed. So now we are kind of anchored as high as you can anchor the progr program within, within Oslo. We have developed a um, case control study for families participating within the program, com within the districts that actually have implemented the program. And we are comparing those parents to districts that does not have the program in addition. Because we, all, we always have the basic program, but we are comparing now to see whether or not the program actually has an effect. And we're, right now we're trying to um, do research within the family. How does this affect the mother, the interaction with the child, interaction with the public health nurse, relationship, salutogenetic. We have uh, the, using the SOC 13 to see with, with, uh, do they have a high degree of uh, sense of coherence. Uh, it's all sort of uh, variables we're trying to, of course, we have to give it, give it back to the policy and see that you have actually invested 80 million Norwegian crowns. You have to have something back. So we're, we're doing that as well now.